heads and politicians from around the British Isles will be visiting the Isle of Man in the autumn as the British Irish Parliamentary Association prepares to hold its annual, sorry, its autumn conference here. Those involved in the gatherings include representatives from the UK Parliament, politicians from the Republic of Ireland, the Scottish Parliament, the Northern Ireland Assembly, the Welsh Assembly, the states of Guernsey and Jersey, not no Sark, and Timwall. The association was established 20 years ago and has a number of committees which deal with matters including European affairs and environmental and social issues. But is there really any benefit in the Isle of Man being a member? Or since we're significantly smaller than most of the other member countries, is our voice likely to be ignored? I asked the Director of Information for the Celtic League, Bernard Moffat, if it was all a waste of time and money. Well, no, I don't think so. I think that given the evolution of the devolved settlement across the United Kingdom now, these sort of institutions are more important. I mean, the political realities of 30 or even 20 years ago have changed markedly with the creation of the uh, Welsh Assembly and the Scottish Parliament and, of course, the Northern Ireland Assembly as well. So I think these institutions are more important. I mean, from a Celtic League perspective, we would prefer an institution that brings together the Celtic countries, but I think it's probably unrealistic to uh, see any structure which artificially leaves out other elements of the British Isles as being uh, realistic, really. But aren't we just one of the flies on the buns at these bun fights? Because it strikes me that we're members of all kinds of things, the British Irish Council, the British Irish Parliamentary Assembly, and for years I've been interviewing politicians who say how important it is that we get together with uh, people from other jurisdictions. But the reality is that when the UK decide that they're going to cut agreements with us that have been extant for a number of years, these friendships and alliances seem to have no benefit to us at all. No, I, I don't. I don't agree because I, I think part of the reaction that's that's come to the cancellation of the reciprocal health agreement has been a support from parliamentarians. So I think there is uh, some mileage from uh, these sort of institutions. What I do perhaps agree with you on is that there's a need to monitor very closely just exactly what they are doing. If you had to ask me what I would point to as a complete waste of time for our folk uh, to be involved in themselves in our politicians. I would say more the Commonwealth organisations have little relevance. I think that the focus should very much be on the relationships with the parliamentary uh, establishments in adjacent jurisdictions. I think there's more mileage out of that, to be perfectly honest. The Celtic League's perspective is we want to promote cooperation between the Celtic areas anyway, and this goes a considerable way towards that. You know, we're not fans of the wider dimension, but I think I'd be churlish if I didn't admit there were benefits that uh, flow from that. I mean, I think Steve Roden deserves a word or two of praise. I mean, he's not my favourite politician in, in the Manx context, not least because he insists on wearing a wig. At uh, this point in political evolution, I, th I would have thought we would be modernising, but on this occasion, I think he's got it right, and provided there's a strict monitoring of the results from the interchanges of this type of assembly, and it just doesn't become a, a bit of a talk and shop and an excuse for a holiday, well, um, I think that, that they should be promoted and there should be more Manx involvement in it. After all, the Isle of Man is uniquely placed. It's right at the heart of the British Isles and we're, we're uniquely placed geographically to be a centre. So you're in favour of this then, generally speaking. Uh, what other sort of involvement should our politicians be making with people across? The strength of links between parliamentarians should be encouraged. I'll give you two examples. On the reciprocal health agreement, and I think we're getting ourselves into a bit of a, a spin over that, to be perfectly honest. It is something that the Isle of Man can cope with. But on that, there has been a considerable amount of support, some are arguing more support, from external politicians than has been generated in the island here. And I think that comes about directly as a result of contacts that exist. And the other thing is, when we look at health services generally and the large slice of health service income, which was going into the northwest, and I think in that instance we were getting ripped off, you know, the services we get from hospitals in the northwest for specialist treatments, the DHSS did start, and I think they are looking, at the possibility of sourcing these services in 
other jurisdictions like Scotland, perhaps Northern Ireland, or indeed the Republic of Ireland. And I think that sort of consciousness wouldn't have developed without the uh, interchange that is at, at uh, political and uh, parliamentarian level. Bernard Moffat of the Celtic League. I'm on the fence on this one, so help me get off it. What do you make of the Isle of Man's involvement with groups like this? Do you think it strengthens the Manx position in the British Isles, or is the island too small to really have much of a voice? Last week we heard how at the latest meeting of the British Irish Parliamentary Assembly, there was a call for the cancellation of the Reciprocal Health Agreement to be put on hold. Is that the kind of support the island should be trying to bolster, or is it all a waste of time, a talking shop? Get in touch and let us know what you think. 66 13 68, join us live. Text 166 or email talk at manxradio.com Come and find out why. Thank you very much. Jason Roberts in the newsroom. You're listening to Talking Heads, this hour of the programme. The Isle of Man is to host a conference of the British Irish Parliamentary Assembly this autumn. It's the first time the autumn meeting has been held outside the UK, so uh, Steve Roden, who's our local uh, representative on that, is thrilled to bits. He reckons it's a bit of a coup for us. What do you think? Do you think it's a coup for the island? Do you think that membership of these things is important? Or do you think it's all a bit of a talking shop, a bit of a waste of time, uh, a bit of an excuse for away days for politicians from uh, around the British-Irish region? Give me a call and let me know what you think. 66 